So in today's video, I am going to be doing the first of a few mini tutorials where I'm gonna show you how you can use Airtable as your Webflow CMS. So without further ado, let's get into it. <music> Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Connor, and on this channel, I help people who cannot code build their own online businesses with no code tools like Webflow, Airtable, and Zapier. So I've decided to start a new series for people who are currently building their websites in Webflow, and I am going to show you how you can use Airtable to make that your Webflow CMS so that instead of having to log into Webflow and updating individual collection items all of the time, you'll be able to control everything from inside of Airtable. So my goal for this series is to help people who already know their way around Webflow to discover the power of using tools like Airtable and Zapier. So if you don't have any experience with any of those tools, then this series is going to be for you. On the other hand, if you are already experienced with those tools, but you're trying to find a few ways to optimize certain workflows, then I'm also going to show you some more advanced things like how you can use Airtable scripts to also update items inside of your Webflow CMS to create items inside of your CMS. So there are a whole bunch of fun things in store for us. So in this first little tutorial today, I am going to show you how you can create a button field inside of Airtable and then use that button to automatically update CMS items inside of your Webflow project. Now, before I get into it, the only thing I ask of you is if you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, if you are pumped for this series, then please leave a like. Also, let me know in the comments down below how much experience you have with tools like Zapier, Integromat, and all those types of things. But with all of that out of the way, let's dive straight into it. Okay, so in order for us to rebuild this workflow, there are gonna be a few little things that I'm gonna need you to get. First of all, you are going to have to have, obviously, your Webflow account. Then we're also going to need an Airtable account and a Zapier account. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm going to be taking my location CMS collection that I have on the Unicorn Factory, and I am going to set up a workflow inside of Airtable that automatically allows me to update fields that I have inside of my Webflow CMS with values that currently sit in one of the different columns inside of my Airtable table. Now the tool that I am going to be using in order to set up this workflow is Zapier, but you'll be able to do the same thing with tools like Integromat if that is your automation tool of choice. Now, just a quick note about this. In order for this workflow to work, you are going to have to import all of the uh, collection items that you have inside of that particular Webflow collection already. And you are also going to need to make sure that you have your Webflow item ID stored inside of Airtable. So if your CMS was set up similar to mine, then it should look something like this. I have these particular fields here that are also uh, fields inside of my Webflow collection. I have a number field for the count, which basically is a count of the amount of freelancers that I have in certain locations. And then I also have my Webflow ID that I'm going to have to use in order to update Webflow later on. So if you haven't done any of that, there are a few different ways that you can import all of your information into Airtable. The first way is to either get a CSV file and just import that into here, but there's also a tool called Noble that you can use to connect it directly to um, Airtable and import all of your collection items from the Webflow CMS. I do have a video on this channel explaining how Noble works and if that is something you want to do then that is an option as well. But I'm going to skip that step because that is not what this video is about today. The first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to lay out what we want to actually do inside of Webflow. So my job is going to be to populate these fields here with whatever information I have inside of Webflow at any given time. So in order for us to do that, we're going to have to set up a workflow that updates a live item inside of Webflow. So we'll start off by creating a new zap and the trigger event, which basically starts the workflow is going to be something called a webhook. So what I need you to do is just search for webhooks by Zapier. And then as the trigger event, I want you to select catch hook. And then once that is done, just click on continue and you'll be good to go. Now, I want you to skip this step for now. We are going to be coming back to this step later on, but what we wanna do now is we want to set up our first action event where we update Webflow with the information that currently sits inside of Airtable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click into action and then we're gonna search for Webflow. And then we are going to select update live item as the action event. 
Now, once you've connected your site, you'll be able to select your site, your collection, and then you're also going to have to select the Webflow CMS item ID. Now, the Webflow CMS item ID is the value that you have stored inside of your Airtable table. And without this particular value here, we won't be able to tell Webflow what item we want to update which is why we are going to have to send this value here through the webhook that we set up in the first step. Now, if you are completely unfamiliar with how webhooks work, then I have a video on this channel that gives you a high level overview of how web hooks work, how you can use them to set up certain workflows, and that will give you a more detailed understanding of what it's all about. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to start off by grabbing the URL that Zapier provides. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on copy and then we're gonna make our way back to Airtable and we are going to add a new field on the right side that is a button field. So just in the field type, search for button and then what it will ask you for is to add the URL. So from there, what we're gonna do is we're going to open the speech bubble and we are going to paste in the webhook that we received from Zapier. So whenever we click on this particular link, the webhook will fire. But what we're gonna need to do in order to send information to Zapier is we are going to have to add something called URL parameters. So URL parameters are basically values that are stored inside of here. And the information that we want to send to Zapier is the Webflow item ID so that we can then later on add the item ID to the second step where we are asked to add the item. So the way that we can do that is we're just going to go after the um, slash and we're going to add a question mark. And then we are going to type in Airtable ID and then we are going to go equals now after the string with the url is closed what we are going to do is we're going to add the and symbol and we are going to add a variable which is the webflow id okay so now that we've got that set up we've got a whole bunch of unique urls that basically have our webhook url as well as a unique parameter with the webflow item id so that we can send that to zapier so I'm just gonna show you how it works. Whenever you click on open URL, you'll now be able to jump up in here, test the trigger, and we will see that the Airtable ID, or actually in this case, it's a Webflow ID, has been passed through in Zapier, and we can now use this value here to tell Webflow what item inside of our Webflow collection we wanna update. So I can just go ahead, select it and we're good to go. So now the question is, how exactly are we going to populate this information here with the values that are stored inside of Airtable? So in order for us to do that, we're actually going to have to do another step, which is to look up a specific record inside of Airtable. So before the Webflow step, you'll find a plus button. And what we wanna do now is we wanna click on the plus button and we now want to go and search for the information that sits inside of that Airtable record. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on Airtable and then we are going to click on find record and then we are going to connect our account. And once we've selected the correct base and table, we are going to search by field and the field that we are going to search by is the Webflow ID. And the reason why we choose the Webflow ID is because we can actually already find a specific record by Webflow ID because we pass it through in that first step inside of Zapier where we catch the webhook. So what we're gonna do is we're going to jump in here and we are going to put in the Webflow ID that we received in the first step where we catch the webhook. And so now when we go ahead and we click on continue, now, we'll be able to see all of the values that sit inside of that particular record. And sure enough, as soon as the search process is done, you'll be able to see what the location is, you'll be able to see all the other fields that are currently stored inside of your Airtable table, and you'll now be able to use that in future steps. So what we wanna do now is we wanna to return to the 
Webflow step and we want to ask ourselves what values do we actually want to update? So I am going to update the page title. So with whatever I have in here. So we are going to go in to Zapier and we are going to go to the second step where we find a record and we are now going to select the field that sits inside of your table that we want to update inside of Webflow. So you can see right here, it says fields, page title. So I'm just gonna select that. Next, I wanna update the page description. I'm gonna go and select that. And then you can basically go through every single individual field and populate it with whatever information you're currently storing inside of Airtable. So one important last thing to do before you click on the continue button is to make sure that you have set archived and draft both to false and then click on continue. So once all of that is done, all you need to do is click on test and continue and then turn on zap. So now when we jump back in to Airtable, I'm going to quickly make some updates to it. So I'm going to go update Webflow as my label. And now to see if it works or not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh the CMS. And now I have used the pen to basically display certain field values that sit inside of Webflow. And what I wanna do now is I wanna update this particular record here called Taranaki region with an updated page title, updated page description, SEO title, and meta description. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back into my ear table table, I'm going to find that particular record which sits right at the bottom. And now all I need to do is click on update Webflow. I can see that the webhook was received. And now when I jump back into Webflow and I refresh the page, I can see that all of the values inside of Webflow automatically updated, which means that now we know the workflow works and we can use Airtable to update records inside of Webflow. And so now that we've got this workflow set up, we'll be able to control our Webflow CMS from inside of Airtable. And another big thing that is really cool about a workflow like this is that you don't actually have to update all of your records and CMS items in bulk. You can just do it one at a time whenever you've made a certain change. And so now you can just go out there, you can create a table for every single one of your CMS collections and you'll be able to basically control what sits inside of Webflow from Airtable and whenever you've made a change inside of Airtable, all you'll need to do is click on that update CMS button and you'll be good to go. Okay, so that is it for this video. In a future video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can actually do the exact same thing without actually having to use a third-party automation tool like Zapier or Integromat. So if you are interested in that, then please be sure to be subscribed to the channel. Even hit that notification bell. I never ask people to do that, but you should definitely do that. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking around and I'll see you back here for the next one.